Welcome to this video on these things. It's a boiler flu flu management kit. So let's get on with it and find out exactly what these things are and how you're going to install them. So first of all, what is a flu management kit? So this flu management kit is designed and made for condensing boilers only. So you cannot put this on a non-condensing boiler. So what it's basically there to do is what it says on the tin. It's a plume management kit. So you can use this kit to redirect the products of combustion or the plume and stop it becoming a pluming nuisance such as pointing the products of combustion away from neighbours property or stopping it covering a walkway or a passageway so people don't have to walk through it. So that's basically what a plume management kit does. Now the documents what might help us out with using plume management kits are of course the manufacturer's instructions, J2 of the building regulations, BS 5440 part 1 and finally Gas Safe Technical Bulletin 016. So they're the documents that can always help you out when you're looking at positionings or installation of plume management kits. So let's have a look first at what BS 5440 says about plume management kits. Now BS 5440 part 1, which is for flues, part 2 is ventilation, was revised in 2023. So this is what it says about when you can use a plume management kit. Now, when you're installing a fan fluid boiler, which basically condensing boilers are, you have to be more than 300 mil away from an opening in a building. So that could be a ventilation opening, it could be a window, it could be a door, it could be a patio door, it could be vented eaves. So that's what they mean by an opening. So if we have a look at this drawing first, so you can see the blue section is 300 millimeters away from this opening. So technically you can stall the flu anywhere outside the shaded blue zone. Obviously you wouldn't be installing it here, but it means you could install it below the window. Now, the red section you can see here is 150 millimeters away from the frame. Now, the reason why BS5440 says away from the frame from this one is this little statement here where it says air inlet 150 mil not allowed in the red zone due to structural and temperature issues. So, if you are in the blue zone, you can use a plume management kit to actually get you away from this situation if the manufacturer's instructions says you can, because not every boiler allows you to do this. Most of them do, but not all of them. So, if we was to go in to install a flue here, and we were more than 150 mil away from the frame, we can use a plume management kit. Now this plume management kit then will have to terminate more than 300 millimeters away from the opening in the building, so outside the blue zone. It also has to have a minimum of 500 millimeters. So if you were up here somewhere, you still got to go more than 500 millimeters up. You cannot just put a flue elbow on the top of there because it changes the flue configuration. Anyway, that's basically what BS5440 says about using flue management kits. Yes, we can use them as long as the manufacturer says so, but we have to be more than 150 mil away from the frame. If you're within the red zone, 
you cannot install a flue there and if you're within the blue zone you may be able to use a flue management kit to get you out of that installation problem. Let's have a look at a few more. So let's have a look at the routing options. Now this is pretty much standard with most of the boiler manufacturers but again check the manufacturer's instructions before you install a plume management kit. Now most of them want you to go up before you go across if that makes sense. So this is the standard plume management kit. Remember from the center of your terminal to the top of the bend at the top of the uh, plume management kit has to be a more than 500 mil in a diagonal. So that's the same for that one and it's the same for this one. So when we go up and straight across and up again, we need to make sure we have a fall in the flue. And this is so the condensate can go back into the boiler, into the heat exchanger and then out through the condensate trap and drain. We need a minimum of 44 millimetres per metre or 2.5 degrees fall back to the boiler. If we, again we do the 45 angle, which I think is a lot better, looks a lot neater, then it's still the same, we need more than this 500 mil. So that is the standard routing options for most of the boiler manufacturers. Now, can't stress, keep stressing this more. Please check the manufacturer's instructions because some may be different. Now, let's see how just turning your plume management kit by 45 degrees from the wall can help you massively with the dimensions from boundaries according to document J of the building regulations and the gas safe technical bulletin 016. Now according to the building regs if the flue is facing a boundary we need a minimum of 600 millimeters. If the flue is parallel to the boundary from the side to the boundary we need a minimum of 300 mil and if we are directly across from an opening into the building window door heaven we need a minimum of two meters now if we take our plume kit and we turn it 45 degrees then we can reduce these measurements by half. So we've turned it 45 degrees, we've still got 600 there, that means we've only got 300 there. We've still got 300 here, but that means we've got 150 mil. We've still got 600 here, but we've got 300 directly across. So that is how this little plume management kit can alter your distances according to document J of the building regs. Now, how can a plume management kit help you with a carport? So if we look at the carport here, now it must be open on at least two sides. What we've got is the flue, if it's facing the carport, we need at least 600 mil. From the side of the flue to the opening in the building, so like a door, we need 1,200 millimeters. And from the top of the flue to the bottom of the actual uh, carport roof, we need 200 millimeters minimum. And if you add a flue over the top of a carport, we need at least 300 mil from the bottom to the top of the roof. So we can use a plume management kit, remember if the manufacturer allows you to, to help us with this installation. So we need to still install the flue as it should be. So 200 away from the eaves or the, um, the carport. But we still need to be two meters off the floor. If we're less than two meters off the floor with this system, then we'll still need to put a terminal guard and the terminal guard is there to protect the flue system from damage. The terminal guards used to be there to stop people getting burned, but there's no heat coming from this now, so we're using the terminal guard because BS5440 says we have to. But it's now there just to protect the flue system rather than us getting burnt from it. 
and but we still need to comply it still needs to be 50 mil all the way around from the front and we can get specialist terminal guards for this flu system and normally coated or they're made of stainless steel or the plastic coated so when we come above the roof we must be 300 above the pitch of the roof like we would be from ground level to stop snow and leaves and rain bouncing back in there. The other major thing is it has to face the same way as the air inlet because like I've put here the plume kit must discharge its products of combustion and have its air in in the same pressure zone. That basically means facing the same way on the wall. So if we terminated it back here so it's looking up the roof then that's not allowed so we're not allowed to do that because it takes us out of the pressure zone so you've got different pressures coming in to what you've got going out of the boiler so it could cause the problems the carport also has to be open on at least two sides but we would prefer three sides but most of the manufacturers for these plume kits will say as long as it's got two sides and then that will stop all the pluming getting under the carport. Now in this situation we've got a little lean-to what's been built onto the side of a house where the flue terminates. Now can we use a plume management kit to overcome this problem? Now one of the things you can't do with a plume kit is this. So this is an extension or a conservatory and this is the old position of the flue. So the products of combustion came out here. You cannot use a plume kit to take the products of combustion out through the roof and leave the air intake coming in your kitchen extension or your conservatory. You cannot do that. That would be classed as at risk under IGEM G11, the unsafe situations procedure. But this is what you would have to do. You would have to take the flue through on a vertical flue system and you would have a distance of whatever the manufacturer's instruction says. Now I've seen this as little as 300 and up to 1500. So you would follow the manufacturer's instructions and you would use a vertical kit. Now I have seen it also where you, the, the elbow comes out of the flue as well. So they use the old bit here and they stick it up there. Uh, technically, can you do that? As long as the manufacturer said you can have white showing on your flue, then technically you could do, but you wouldn't want to. You'd use a proper vertical flue kit. So that's how you would get over if the flue flues into a conservatory or a kitchen extension after the extension's been built. So, like I said, you cannot use a plume management kit to get you out of an illegal installation. So, hopefully, that helps with carports. Another important flue consideration is what I've put here in green. So the plume kit plus the concentric flue system, so the standard flue system, must not exceed the total length of the flue system designed for that boiler. So there might be a bit of ass involved. Now then, Worcester, their flue system naturally already has a plume management kit in it. You don't need to buy a separate plume kit most of the time. Because if I just undo this bit here, it's a bit fiddly while I'm holding it, and I spin it round, so it's now like that, and click it back into position, I've now got the flue could go upwards. I can also turn it to this way, and this way. And I can deflect it this way and that way. No, I can't turn it downwards because if I was turning it downwards, it would be sending the products of combustion back down here. So it allows us to go, if I put it straight up, which is what's in the middle like that, I can go that way, I can go that way, and I can go up in the top, but I can't go down. So that's what one already built in. And Worcester are the only ones who have it built into the turret like this. If you wanted to do it on this flue system, they do actually produce an elbow like I'm showing here, where you can just push the elbow on the top and it's on a 45 degree and you can angle it 
have a straight up to the left or to the right. Remember, you can't do it downwards. So, that's a quick look at plume management kits. Now, also, some of the boiler manufacturers produce specialist flues on the lines of the plume management kit, and they call them balcony kits. So in this situation where we've got a public walkway and the flue is fluing under the balcony, they've extended the products of combustion out underneath the balcony and protruding out for more than 25 mil. Also, the flue length for this needs to be more than 500 mil. But always follow manufacturer's instructions when you're installing these specialist flue systems. So that's my look at using these flue management kits. So hopefully it helps. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.